it's time for me to hop again. And I'm not talking about window manager hopping, and certainly I'm not distro hopping. It's time for me to hop terminal emulators. Uh, some of the terminal emulators I've used in the past include Termite, Xterm, URXVT, and here recently I've been on ST for about a year. And all of those terminal emulators, by the way, are great. They're fine terminal emulators. I would be happy using any of those four terminal emulators, but they all have their own quirks, their own issues. No terminal emulator that I've tried so far has been perfect, so I was looking for another solution. And I think that solution for me is going to be Alacrity. So what got me thinking about this was a couple of weeks ago, well, you guys know I recently put up a website over at distrotube.com, and over there I also put up a web form. And on the web form, one of the first posts I made was I was asking the community, hey, what is your preferred terminal emulator? And I listed about 10 options, including Xterm, URXVT, Termite ST, Kitty, Alacrity Console, Gnome Terminal, Terminator, and then, of course, the last option is Other. I was surprised that so many of you guys are using ST, which is a great terminal emulator. Of course, a lot of you guys were also using the GNOME terminal. I was not surprised by that. But I, when I put Alacrity in there, I ex expected some of you guys to actually have tried out Alacrity. It gets a lot of hype about possibly being the fastest terminal emulator out there. And it received no votes. And this got me to thinking, well, nobody's really trying this thing out. Nobody's using it. Maybe I should give it a shot and see what it's all about and see if it actually deserves some attention. So Alacrity is hosted over on GitHub. For those of you not familiar with this project, it's still kind of young. It's only been around a, a couple of years or so, uh, maybe three years, if that. Anyway, it's a cross-platform GPU accelerated terminal emulator. So cross-platform means it's available on a variety of operating systems, including GNU slash Linux. It's GPU accelerated. That is the claim to fame there. That's what should make this terminal emulator so much faster than all the other terminal emulators is it uses your GPU. It offloads some of the work to the GPU because it uses the uh, OpenGL renderer. Because it has that GPU acceleration, it should be faster. It's also written in Rust. I, I know a lot of proponents of the Rust programming language uh, like to tout its speeds. Reading a little bit from the blurb here on the GitHub page, Alacrity, quote, is the fastest terminal emulator in existence, end quote. Uh, the fact that they just boldly put that out there like it's a matter of fact has me a little bit concerned. Surely they wouldn't write that if it wasn't the case, but I, until I install it and play with it, I don't know. So let me switch to my desktop here, and I'm going to open up Alacrity, and let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. This is Alacrity out of the box with this default configuration. I haven't modified it in any way. Out of the box, you know, it's got some a pretty nice color scheme. It's got some sensible keyboard shortcuts, but really the very first thing you want to do when you start Alacrity, start using Alacrity, is start customizing it, and you need to do that by creating your own custom config. That custom config should be placed in your home directory dot config slash alacrity slash alacrity dot yml. Now, don't worry about that. What you need to do is you need to go and find the default alacrity dot yml on your system. So for me, I have locate installed. So I'm just going to locate alacrity dot yml. And there is the default one. What you need to do is you need to copy that over to your home directory dot config slash alacrity slash alacrity dot yml and I've already done that and then once you have that created I would just open this config file up I'll just open it in vim since we want to stay in the terminal here and it's a very substantial config file and you can customize everything from the window size the window title the font uh, various font aspects Do you want to have a different font face for bold versus italic versus bold italic you can offset the font if you want the character spacing to be closer together further apart you can also do line spacing you can do window padding you can do all kinds of things and I have modified this somewhat I have changed to a different color scheme than the default I went ahead and you guys know I've been using uh, the Dracula, I think, color scheme and Emacs and my 
uh, ST terminal. So I went ahead and copied the Dracula color scheme over into my alacrity.yml. So this is my alacrity, and you can see I've got the, the Dracula color scheme working for me here. I can launch HTOP here, you can see. Looks very similar to what my ST config looked like. Let me zoom in. And one thing you will notice, I do have a little padding around the window. If I didn't have the padding, the tilde character for the, uh, the alias for the home directory, it would be butted up right against the window, as it often is in things like URXBT and Xterm and all those other terminal emulators. But the fact that I can adjust all of this, again, I, if I go down the config file, you will see things like padding right here. Padding, I put six pixels of padding for the uh, X coordinate and the Y coordinate, and that gives me the padding around the terminal window. Four colors, of course I've set the primary colors for the background and the foreground, as well as the color scheme, your typical 16 color color scheme here. And you can also play around with opacity. Now by default there is no opacity, but if you wanted to, what I could do is I could comment this line out, and I will go down here and uncomment this line out. And then if I write that, I'm going to complain. One thing you do need to be careful, and I'm glad I made this mistake on camera, is this config file, the alacrity.yml, is very picky about the spacing. So you have to get the spacing right. So in this, I think the problem is that I had a space in front of that line, you know, in front of background underscore opacity. I need to get rid of that. That's right. Yeah, and now the error went away and everything looks good here. I can quit out of that and just do an LS. There, yeah, everything looks good in this. I, I really like the look and feel of Alacrity. It does seem to be snappy. And what I really love is that substantial config file that I just briefly showed you has so many options in it. And that is so much better than the way you have to config, especially the old school terminal emulators like uh, Xterm and URXVT. Because who likes fooling with the X resources file? It's kind of clunky. Uh, it's, sometimes it's really hard to get the settings exactly the way you want using X resources. Also, ST. I, I really like the ST terminal, but I don't like patching ST. And I don't like recompiling ST every time I make a minor change. Having a terminal with a proper config file with a lot of options, like you can really customize this thing to your heart's content. I that just that fact alone makes me want to switch to Alacrity as my default terminal emulator for a little while just to see how I get along with it. Now playing around with Alacrity, I will say I did find one minor gripe. So Vim, let me open up something in Vim. I'll open up actually my VimRC because what I want to show you is actually in the VimRC. But say I want to do a vertical split here and split the window. Let me open up another config. And what I'll open up NerdTree while I'm here in Vim as well. Now typically Vim does have some mouse functionality, especially when you have a, a split frame like this. You know, you could grab the border and adjust the frames. And here in NerdTree, you know, I can click on some of this stuff and I can get the directories to open if they have, you know, subdirectories and files in these subdirectories. I can do all that with the mouse as well as the keyboard. But initially in Alacrity, the very first time I opened Vim and started playing around, that wasn't the case. I had no mouse functionality inside Vim, you know, especially in the areas where the, the mouse typically worked. Worked in every other terminal emulator I've ever used. So I was kind of concerned about that, but I did find the solution. And the solution was this setting here. You can see I made a comment in my VimRC. This fixes the mouse issues using the Alacrity terminal. And you need to set space TTY mouse equals SGR. If you add that line, then all of a sudden the mouse works just fine in Vim. So get out of that. Clear the screen. But of course you guys want to see the speed of alacrity and you know what i could test the speed a little bit it would not be scientific but what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up two different terminals i'll make them the same size in a tiling window manager that's easy so i'll open up alacrity here and i'll keep the font size the default font size i won't zoom in and then by comparison let's open up xterm xterm is on the right here and we will run the same command and time it so i'm going to type the command time because i want to get the time on this and the command I'm going to run is tree space 
root. This command typically takes a little while on most terminal emulators. Let's see how long it takes in Alacrity. I will say just watching the animation, that animation is very, very smooth. Typically when you run this kind of command on most terminal emulators, graphically there's a lot of glitching, you know, the terminal kind of wigs out. That was very smooth, just the animation. And the time, very quick. So that was tree on root and it ran in 14.3 seconds and that's the real time. And let's start timing tree on root here in Xterm. And again, just looking at it, you can tell Xterm is struggling a little more with the graphics than what Alacrity was, right? It's not nearly as smooth. The animation of all the text flying by is not as smooth. So let's see how long this takes. Now, I've already been waiting a lot longer than what Alacrity took. I'll wait a little while longer. And I'm still waiting. And I'm still waiting. I went and grabbed me a cup of coffee and it finally finished. So running tree on root took two minutes, 34 seconds in X term, where it took 14 seconds in alacrity. So I don't know, you know, this is just one test between one other terminal emulator. I mean, it, it's not scientific at all, but the fact that there is that big of a difference running tree on root between Alacrity and Xterm, quite frankly, is surprising to me, probably surprising to you guys. That's a, a crazy difference in speed. So I, I think I'm gonna use Alacrity for a little while. Looking forward to this, the speed difference really impresses me. And one other thing I wanna do though is, if I'm going to take the trouble of moving to Alacrity, especially if it's all about speed, I need to start replacing other things, especially inside the command line that may be an improvement as far as speed. Some of the command line utilities you guys have told me about over the last couple of years and I never have really gave a serious look to, one of them is dust, which is a replacement for du, the standard du command. There is supposed to be a faster alternative to du called dust and it is in the arch user repository the aur if you don't have dust in your repository you can always install it with cargo cargo install du dash dust would be the command you would need to run to install it it is a rust program but dust is supposed to be a little quicker and just running dust rather than du without arguments is really nice because uh, instead of getting just a, a ton of output on the screen, actually it does this much more sensibly. It just shows me the directories that are the biggest on my system. So I sh it's actually man page dust. If it has a man page, it does not. Does it have help? Dust dash dash help does have some help options. Really not that many flags with it, but I, I may go ahead and just alias du over to dust since it's supposed to be a speed improvement. Another speed improvement you guys have told me about is stop using grip. Grip is slow, which I've, you know, when I made my awk video a few weeks back, you guys were like, hey, you know what? You're right. Grip is slow. Don't use grip. Use rip grip. And rip grip is also in the Arch repositories. Rip grip is probably in most Linux distributions repositories. And then once you have rip grip, you can grip some things. For example, if I ran a history command and I wanted to grip everything that involves the string CD, you know, I could do that. But you know what? Let's time it. Let's time history piped into grip CD. And it runs very fast. It should run very fast. It's not a lot going on. The real time is 0.004 seconds. Now let's run it with rip grip. And rip grip is alias to RG. Same command. Time it. Actually, it's the same time. Uh, 0.004 seconds real time. The user time was slightly better with rip grip. 004 seconds compared to 005 seconds. And I'm sure if we did something a little more substantial that would probably be a much bigger time difference. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and start using dust and rip grip. And we may look into some other anti-bloat command line utilities along the way. So what do you guys think about Alacrity? Those of you that have used it, what was your experience? Did you like it? 
Uh, were you happy with it? Are you still using it? And did you switch to something else? Also, for those of you that haven't been over to the distrotube.com website, go to the forums and you can still vote in that poll and you could still reply to that thread if you want to discuss your favorite terminal emulator over there. Now, before I go, this show was made possible by Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Corbini, and Lambda, Michael, Mitchell, Rob, Sean, Stallman, and Willie. These guys are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode about the Alacrity Terminal Emulator wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all these other fine ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These generous folks help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.